Hey, good afternoon. I am here today with Brad Jarrett, and we are in for a really exciting conversation. Now, I've asked all of our men friends to join us today, and then I've asked all of our women friends who have men in their lives to join us as well. I'm Angela Brown, and I am the CEO of a company called Savvy Cleaner, and I've spent the last 30 years inside people's homes. Now, when we're in there, sometimes we find things that we don't want to find. We find extra rooms. We call them scary rooms that have lots of clutter stuff that we just chuffed in there when the relatives were coming. And then maybe there are a closet or two that need some renovating. And maybe there are some Amazon boxes that came that now are stacking up on the sides of the hallway and maybe on the sides of the stairs as we go up the stairway. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so today we're gonna talk about some really honest things. And I've got Brad here with me because one of the things that he does is he empowers men. And so we're gonna have a really honest conversation, I know. You guys don't like the honest conversations, right? They're tough. But I'm going to ask you if you want to jump in in our conversation and you want to ask your questions, we're going to answer as many of them as we possibly can today. But what we want to do when you leave here today is we want you to have a new game plan and we want you to believe that you deserve a clean place to live, a place that's clean, a place that's tidy, and a place that's safe because it's going to give you a better way of looking at life and it's going to help all the decisions that you make. So I'm going to let you hear firsthand from Brad Jarrett how we can do that in our own personal lives. So please help me welcome Brad to our show. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Angela. Well, I was really excited when I learned that you were coming on our show because you specialize in helping men. And men are kind of a tough crowd. They are, uh, you know, hey, we got this. And maybe they don't got this. So give us a little bit of background and tell us why you ended up in this particular niche. Sure, so I grew up as an immigrant child of immigrant parents from South Africa and Mauritius. And when I was four years old, we moved to Tampa, Florida. And being an only child, I had to acclimate to American culture. And so everything that brought me to where I am today is based on those early years where I was overweight and had to go through my own physical health journey. And the ultimate validation of that was getting recruited into male modeling. And this was after college in 2010 in Tampa, Florida, which was a very hard hit part of the country with the recession. And so there weren't really cool jobs like there are now. Here there's marketing manager and social media, this and brand partnerships. There was none of that back then. And so I said, you know what? The coolest thing I've ever done and the most validating thing I've ever done was work some of these modeling jobs. Let me move down to Miami, give it everything I have to see if I could make it as a male model. And unfortunately, it wasn't this wonderful story of being on GQ and flying around the world and being on billboards everywhere. But I ended up finding a lot of friends that were booking these jobs they were great models great actors they were way better than me they were they had eight packs and i barely had a four pack and <laughs> they were not very good with their money and so what i found is that over over the years being from immigrant parents where debt is viewed a lot differently from immigrants than americans because uh, socially here in america it's okay to have debt you have student loan debt, you have debt with your car, with your house, and everyone has two or three credit cards with some sort of balance. It's very normalized. And growing up and seeing how my parents operated with, with debt and how you, you want to avoid that at all costs, unless it's a car or a house, and you want to pay that off as quickly as possible. And then also studying it over the years through Dave Ramsey and Robert Kiyosaki, and then some of these other younger, newer financial gurus, I was like, wow, this is, this is really good stuff. Let me see if I can help these model and actor friends with their finances because they're beating me to the jobs I want. And so I started helping them there. But every time I would move and follow this career path around to a different city, which is quite typical in modeling, I would have to just bring a suitcase with me and pretty much leave everything else at home. And so from Tampa to Miami, Miami to New York, New York back to South Africa for a brief period to model, then to I think Miami again, then to New York, then to LA, and then back. And I did the circuit and it made me realize, what do I really need in terms of possessions? What, what am I always buying over and over and over again? And what am I just thinking I will utilize? And I just, I, it's the first thing that I get rid of when I have to make this move. So it brought me some good awareness as to 
the few possessions that bring me tremendous value and how well I could live off of few things. And then what things I find, hey, this is well worth it. And then the other stuff, it's it's not so much. So, uh, you know, now I'm here in West Hollywood and I, I'm not a minimalist by any means. I like having stuff, but it's more intentional. And whenever I get something, I, I wonder, OK, what am I now getting rid of? Because to me, clutter, to me, uh, just seeing a lot of stuff takes energy from me. And when you're in the middle of a big bustling city, you want to come home and have peace and quiet and serenity. You don't want to come home and just be overloaded with stimuli because it's just uh it looks like a messy room and and you're trying to analyze every single thing so uh, it's become more and more important as i get older as well as in living in the middle of a very stressful city well you know it's interesting that you bring up all of these different things because there is a common thread through each of the different stopping points along your journey and one of them and i want to stop there for a second was you talked about finances and it's really interesting to me because one of the challenges that we have in the Clutter Corner space, and that's a lot of people that join us here on the Clutter Corner show, is because their lives are busy and they're busy professionals. And I'm talking about doctors and lawyers and dentists and school teachers and people that serve, 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 serve. They serve everyone else. And then they come home and they're like, I'm so exhausted. I just, I just can't sit down and do my accounting tonight. Mm -hmm. And so the bills slip or there becomes a stack of bills that are on the counter and I'll get to it on the weekend. Then the weekend comes and, oh, I'm so exhausted, but my family is in town. I'm going to stop and see my family for the weekend. And I'm going to do the things that I, I you know, th that we hope the nice lifestyle provides for us. And so mm -hmm. things get pushed to the back burner, like the cleaning out the garage and cleaning out the attic and the scary rooms and all those things. And the bills pile up. And sometimes it's not an awareness of that. I got to have, habits in place in order to make life flow smoothly. But it's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I have good intentions. And they just, it turns into clutter, both at a physical level, and then it becomes an emotional thing. And it becomes uh, just stagnated progress that just kind of bundles on top of itself. And it equals stress. People lose sleep at night. and They're like, what's happening to my life? So can you address that for a little bit? Because it seems like you really harnessed that and said, look, I'm <laughs> consolidating, I'm minimalizing, and I don't believe in debt. And I mean, you had a series of habits that have carried you through to who you are today. Well, I, I, I believe for me personally, the less I am tied to, the more freedom I have, the more energy I have, and the more I, I feel like a weight is off my shoulders. When, whenever there's, okay, I have a lot of stuff, I have a lot of uh, a messy schedule or I have to go all around town or whatever it is, all of a sudden I go, all right, now I feel heavy. Now I feel like, oh, there's, there's a lot on me. And then I usually sacrifice my health because I don't have time to work out. So now I feel even worse. So for me, it's, I'm always very intentional with just trying to weigh the pros and cons of something. And when I was younger, I would just think more clothes is better, right? I have more options. And now I'm uh -huh. at the point where I go, that in the morning, if I have to choose between 30 t-shirts, I'm already, I feel the amount of energy draining, kind of like if you have your iPhone on full brightness with the, the flashlight on, okay, you see that go to 99%, 98, 97. So for me, it's, it's always how simple can I be while also being happy and, and balancing everything out. And then also in terms of the, the clutter for uh, you know, in the in the home or the storage unit or all that kind of stuff, a lot of it comes down to accountability because it's stuff we want to address. But for example, we had a guy who said, I'm spending $400 a month on a storage unit. It has been there for two years and I've just not gotten around to cleaning it out. And then we said, great, you have to clean it out by Sunday. Can you agree to that? And he said, all right, Sunday it is. And guess what? After two years of not doing it, all of a sudden he does it because there's a, this external pressure. If we're the only pressure, we can let ourselves down. We can let it go on and on. But the same thing with working out. If your, your workout buddy is waiting for you at the gym at seven o'clock in the morning, you have reason to wake up at six o'clock, 6.30 and get your butt to the gym at seven because now someone else is counting on you. So I, I feel like as a kid, 
we we did we ate the vegetables we went to bed on time we did these things because there was a mother a father an aunt a grandparent there was a caregiver that was making us do these things that are best for us and yet mm -hmm. as adults if it's not our boss telling us hey this paper is due this well i guess not really a paper this project's due this is the deadline this is the quota if we don't have that with our finances with our health or just our our home then it could always get pushed, right? The things that people are prioritizing are the things that they have accountability for, right? I, I gotta keep this job. I gotta get that paycheck. I gotta keep uh, the relationship with my parents or my spouse's parents, because if not, then things will really fall apart. But then who's really holding you accountable to your health, to your finances, to uh, the, the organization of your home? So I feel like that's a big, big thing that might be emerging in your field specifically is accountability for addressing the cleanliness and, and just the decluttering of one's home. As we talk about addressing the cleanliness of our home, I want to stop for just a second. And I want to address everybody that's joined us today. I want to say, hi, guys. I'm so glad that you're here. We've got Sally. Sally says, hello. We've got Muppet 929. We have uh, Sandy. Hello, you guys. I'm so glad that you guys have joined us. And those of you that have just joined us that are new here, we're on the call today with Brad Jarrett. And he's giving us some insights into why our habits can affect the outcomes and the results that we're getting. And I love the fact that he was just talking about accountability because it's true. When we are a kid, we have a schedule. Like from the time we're an infant, our parents come home and they say, oh, I got to get home because, you know, my kid needs their bath and they've got to go to bed at a certain time. There's a schedule. Then as we get older, we go to school and there's a schedule. We got to be at the bus at a certain time or we miss the bus. We come home at a certain time and then there's playtime, then there's dinner time and there's a schedule. And as we get older, of course, we go through high school and there's a schedule and then boom, we're out on our own. And all of a sudden there's no schedule. And that's where a lot of people fall apart. And so if they don't have a job, if they don't have a very rigid uh, schedule or something that they're, they're tied to, what happens is they just kind of drift aimlessly and nobody is holding them to go clean your room, go do this, go do that. Nobody's doing that. And so there comes this window of like, hey, we're free, free as a bird. And oftentimes that's where depression sets in. That's where clutter sets in. That's where a whole bunch of really bad management happens as far as time goes, as far as friendship goes, as far as staying up too late at night, eating out, eating the wrong kinds of foods, drinking too much, addictions, and all the stuff. So I'm really interested to learn how we today can change our habits and have accountability and how we can start turning that path so that we can get back on track as adults. Because a lot of us are, I hate to say it, we're drifting aimlessly. Help us, Brad. Help us stop drifting. <laughs> well, I, I'll do what I can. And a schedule, I, I think the schedule is is one thing, but it's the consequences, which is the other. Because remember, if you didn't have the vegetables or didn't get the A on the, the history test as a kid, there were consequences. Now I can't have my freedom. I can't play video games for an hour. The, the internet gets shut off, uh, shut off or the cable will get shut off or I can't go to my friend's birthday party or something like that. So I feel like it's the consequences, which is stronger than the schedule. But I've also learned that discipline is freedom, right? I, and I learned this from Tony Robbins and a lot of other great other leaders where when you're disciplined in something, you, you have these routines and you don't have to think about it. You're just doing the right thing every single day. You're going in that direction it really frees you from wondering, what should I do? What, what, what do I feel like today? And then all of a sudden, yeah, you're going with the wind. And all of a sudden, you're, you know, there's, there's bills piling up. This didn't get paid, all of that. So, you know, I, I like to really just focus on systems and make it as seamless as possible. And when men start with us, it's usually they want to lose weight. Some of them, they want to get in, uh, their finances in, in order. Others, they want to stop drinking for 90 days, but it's usually the weight. And the best book, the best resource for finances, for health, and I believe for decluttering or something like something in this realm is the book Atomic Habits. It's one of those books where I say, look, if you want to get better at anything, Atomic Habits. Why? Because every single day we wake up and it's a brand new day to decide our future and what uh, direction we're headed. And so Atomic Habits is based on all the the hundreds of things we do in a single day and just tweaking it so that it's slightly better so instead of i have to clean up my whole house today oh my god it's all right when i make lunch i'm going to take one paper towel and wipe down the counter 
and after I close the fridge, right? When I close the fridge door, the paper towels are right there. I'm gonna take one paper towel and wipe down anything that's dirty with that one paper towel. I'm not, I'm not gonna address the, the living room or the entire kitchen or all that, just whatever fits on that one paper towel and that's it. Now all of a sudden the door, the fridge door closes and you know there's another tiny little habit that's gonna propel you in the right direction. Same thing as, okay, I go to the restroom and I brush my teeth. Like this is an example for me. I brush my teeth. Well, I got two minutes where I'm standing there with the electric toothbrush. And if you have an electric toothbrush, that two minutes feels like 10 minutes. I swear. I'm like, yeah. are you sure this is two minutes? This, this is like, I mean, just saying. And, and one thing I started doing, I said, well, I'm just standing here. Why don't I just stretch in the meantime, right? I I wake up and I'm, I'm stiff and like, ah, why don't I just prop one foot up on the the sink area and just stretch a little bit because this two minutes I'm using anyway. So that's one way to just habit stack. So whatever direction you, you wanna go in, something that you're doing right now, just attach one tiny little thing that will push you closer to your goal because if this is a habit you do once a day, twice a day, three times a day, well, that's gonna build up very quickly over a week and over a couple of weeks and a month. And imagine a year of just wiping that one area down or taking that one piece of paper or that one sock or shirt that's laying around and just putting that away for every time you go to the kitchen and open the refrigerator. So I, I'm, I'm big into just duplicating tiny things and getting better at that over and over again, because it is overwhelming to say, you, you want me to just over overhaul my entire life, my entire home, my entire office? You want me to do that? That's going to take maybe a two days, three days, and then what are the systems that are going to be in place instead of uh -huh. saying, you know what, this is a lot, but I don't want to think about how much work this is all going to be. Let me just think of that one little thing I could do right now and get a little system in place so that I could do one of those every couple hours or every day or every two days. Well, I love that. And uh, as I was just sitting here thinking, you know, you and me are twins because we're all dressed alike. Um, I'm now thinking that you and Sally are twins because Sally says I do squats during my two minute tooth brushing. <laughs> so Brad is twins with all of us. That's awesome. Um, I, I do like the fact that you were talking about the habits and doing something on a consistent basis day after day. And I think that's really important because it creates a new normal. And, you know, we wake up one day and you said that there are many men in your program that are trying to lose weight. We don't wake up one day and like, poof, we're, we're significantly larger than we were yesterday. We had a series of little tiny habits that we repeated over time that then one day we woke up and like, then poof, we're 300 pounds heavier than we were before. And if we can reverse those processes one by one, what happens is we start to create a new normal. And as that becomes familiar to us and comfortable to us. And it's going to be out of our comfort zone for a second, like me going to the gym. I woke up one day somewhere during menopause and I was like, ah, what happened? I kind of let myself go. So I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to the gym every morning. And it was really uncomfortable because I'd kind of let myself slide out of that. And that was my new normal. I need a new normal. And so I started going to the gym every day. But you talk about accountability. I knew the day would come. I knew the day would come because I know me. Or I'm going to say, ah, I stayed up too late last night. I think I'll sleep in. So what I did is I found some people at the gym that were already at the gym. And I said, hey, I need your help. I need you to look out for me and make sure I come every day because it's going to be really hard for me as I start this new process. So every day when I show up, I'm looking for you. You better be here when I get here. And they're like, okay. And so on the days that I didn't come, they text me. And they're like, hey, are you okay? Did you drop dead? Like, I didn't see you today. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I slept in today because I stayed up too late last night. They're like, that's not cool. That's not cool. Mm -hmm. Come on back. And I was like, okay. And so now if they don't show up, I got to text them and say, hey, not cool. Come on back, you know. <laughs> but, but here we are, middle-aged folks, and we're encouraging each other to stick to the program. Because, and it's, it, it is absolutely free. It doesn't cost us anything. But when you start holding other people accountable, because it's not my mom that's calling telling me I got to work out. It's nobody, nobody's making me do it, but I got to make myself do it. And so as we create that new normal in our life, it's going to be uncomfortable, but the results are resoundingly better. Tell me what your guys that work with you, some of the results that they're finding when they have followed the programs that you're teaching and they find the, the consistencies and they're doing the one little tiny thing, a little tweak better. 
I, I think what's funny is that they start off with, I don't have time to be healthy. I don't have time to clean up. I don't have time to get organized. And I love that because we record the first call we have with them because it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And mm -hmm. we like to have it for the end, for day 90, so we could play it back so that they kind of feel embarrassed, but also know how far they've come. Mm -hmm. And just as an example, one of the, the men was nervous about a business trip. He had to go to Dallas, right? When you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get your health together. A business trip could be disastrous because I don't, I'm not around my gym. I have to go to these business meetings. I have to be around these coworkers that might be drinking a lot of beer or eating unhealthy and all of this. And he posted in our community today, I went to the, I went to the, to Dallas for the business meeting and, or for the conference. And I, stood up. I was the only one standing up during our meetings, but I was standing up instead of sitting down. And then my flight got delayed and I was bummed at first, but then I realized that's an extra hour to stand and walk before my flight so I can get my steps in. So I think wow. in terms of, you, you, you see ways to be organized. You see ways to be financially savvy. You, you see ways to be physically healthy if you start looking for them. Because if we have 24 hours in a day, well, it takes the same amount of time to eat a bagel loaded with butter as it does to eat something healthier, like a, a healthy burger or a salad or a piece of salmon. So in terms of time, I think that's, you can't say I'm too busy for this because that's pretty much every American. Every American is too busy, right? We have family, we have work, we have these side projects, we have these other obligations, we have to take care of our parents, we have all this. But yet there's someone busier than us who has been able to manage it. And for those out there that are making good money and saying, I've got to prioritize my career, there are so many resources out there for you to outsource and hire people to then clean up your homes. There's closet organization companies that have really blossomed the last couple of years. So there's definitely ways around it. I feel like it's just a matter of, of saying, okay, I don't have much time, but what do I have? If it's five minutes a day, if it's 10 minutes a day, what can I do in five minutes a day and 10 minutes a day to just right the ship, turn the ship around? Because you might be just doing things that take the same amount of time going in the wrong direction that now mm -hmm. you can switch to go in the right direction. And even if it takes a year, it takes a year, but that way it's permanent because it's based on your new mindset and your new habits. I'm not a man. But I did find myself in that exact situation where I said, I'm too busy. And as a CEO of a company, I, I was too busy to take care of my health. And I was just like everybody else. I'm so busy, you know. And what really caught my attention was somebody gave me the challenge. They said, how many hours do you have in a week? And I said, 168. They said, that's correct. How many of those hours are you willing to invest in yourself? And I said, what do you mean? They said, would you give yourself 14 hours a week? And I said, yeah. And they said, okay, great. That's two hours a day. You can fit your meditation and your workout in, in those two hours a day. And so go do it. You owe yourself two hours a day <laughs> to take care of yourself because you can't take care of anyone else unless you take care of yourself. And I was like, yeah, right. So I've got 168 hours in a week. 14 of those hours are mine. They said, take those 14 hours first. The first two hours of the day, those are yours. If you don't take them, use them or lose them. And I was like, I'm totally losing them. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was eye opening for me. And then I was like, yes, those are my hours. I'm taking those hours back. And, and well, what's funny about it is that you're not being selfish for doing that. You're doing it for others too, because it's mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't want my parents or, or friends of mine to be neglecting their health and their financial situation and all this to please me or, or to cater to my plans or my invitations, because that's short term. You know, there, there's that that quote that we live by, which is a healthy person has 100 wishes. A sick person only has one. Mm -hmm. So if, if whether it's your finances or, or your health, these are things that we have to address every single day until we die. And you either put in the effort now to find the systems that work for you, that work with your crazy, hectic lifestyle of traveling or managing all these kids or being in an environment that's not the most supportive or healthy and finding these little hacks. Because once you have the system, you go, wow, if I'm so busy right now and I can make this work, when things actually ease up, 
this is going to be easy. But if you're waiting for things to slow down to then get healthy, to say, all right, well, once this happens, then I'm going to start looking at my finances. Then I'm going to start decluttering my home. Then I'm going to start working out and all this. Well, that's assuming that when it gets busy again, you're going to be frazzled and you won't be able to stick with it. So if you're busy, think of it this way. This is the best time for you to tackle anything that's overwhelming because it's like going through a very intense training camp. And then when you play the game, uh, the game's kind of easy compared to the training camp I went through. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to challenge people out there to switch their mindset of if there were, if it were a felony to be hoarding or to to be unorganized at home, if it was a felony to be <laughs> We'd all be in jail. <laughs> yeah, but, but seriously, it, you know, if it were a felony, what would you do? You know, you would you would have something a big consequence, and you'd have to take action. So it's the same thing as if we don't do our taxes. That's what's going to happen. So we we always find a way to do our taxes before you know the IRS comes hounding us. So if we took that level of seriousness to organizing our life and taking care of our health, and that was at stake. Where would you start? And if you just ask yourself that question, you might be like, well, you know what? I'd probably just throw the soda away. Or I, I, would, I wouldn't go to, uh, I, I wouldn't drive my car past the McDonald's and the Wendy's where I always am tempted to stop. I would take this other road where there aren't any restaurants or there might be a, a smoothie place or something like that, which is healthier. One tiny little switch like that can automatically mean, okay, now I'm not spending money on fast food. I'm going straight home or I'm going, you know, there's a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's on that route versus the, the row of Chick-fil-A's and Pizza Hut's and all that kind of stuff. One little thing, if I delete the Postmates app from my phone and uh -huh. change my and tell my partner to change the password and not tell me, oh, I'm not ordering Postmates. I, I guess I'm going to have to order from the grocery store or go to the grocery store or figure something else out. So it's just really making it a priority because it's totally possible. And even in terms of going to the gym, that seem, that could seem very overwhelming. But one of the best examples from that book, Atomic Habits, was, okay, go to the gym for two minutes, just two minutes. You can't stay longer. You're not allowed to stay longer. So the second you're in there, put the timer on for two minutes. Because when you realize most of the effort is getting in the clothes, going to the gym, and now, and then being there, and then saying, all right, well, I've been here for two minutes. This is kind of dumb. I might as well work out. Mm -hmm. You've won. Now you've gotten, the, the hurdle was really to get dressed and to go to the gym at seven o'clock in the morning or 6 p.m. after work. And now that you're there, ah, what's, what's 15 more minutes? What's 20 minutes of actually just going on a treadmill or going on a bike? One of the things that I found significantly different for me is when I took the time to go to the gym, I found that my mind was mentally sharper throughout the course of the day. And I was actually more effective than if I had slid through my workout and I did not go to the gym. So then I started saying to myself, that doesn't make any sense because I just took two hours for myself and now I'm sharper, I'm quicker, I'm more efficient. I'm actually getting more done in the course of the day than I was when I thought I was so busy that I was skipping my workouts. And so tell us, if you will, what the correlation is between actually being healthy and just making excuses and saying, I don't have time. I mean, it, it's when you're healthy, you're doing a, a service for everyone. And if you're a parent, especially, and this is what we really tell our dads that we work with is, hey, this is not just about you. This is about your partner and this is about your kids and you could say whatever you want but they're looking at what you're doing and if you're saying oh, i'm too busy to work out I, I, it's okay to eat this what are you what example are you really setting for them are you saying hey it's okay to it, being healthy is what you do when you're young and you don't have kids but because i have kids i don't have to take care of myself that, that's not cool but also from a career level when you take a look at some of these big entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, look at their physique now. They are op they're doing everything to optimize their hormones, optimize their mental health, because when you're, especially, and, and this is like a bit off topic, but as a man uh, in my early 30s, I suffered from low testosterone and I was having vitamin D and I was working out, I was getting a lot of sunlight and 
meditating and doing all these things. And yet my testosterone was low. And from a physical level, it, it, it sucked because I looked flat. I felt flat. But mentally, no focus, no drive. It was so difficult to stay on task. And there wasn't even a desire to pursue something. And so just being able to optimize my hormones and just get that in a healthy state. Oh, my God, I'm so much more productive. I, my mornings are 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 clear. I, I get a lot done by about 11 o'clock in the morning. And then I have the rest of the day to work out and do all these things. So I, I think there's that misconception that being healthy is a luxury and I've got to take care of others first. But it always comes back to how long do you want to take care of others? Because if you're if you prioritize your health, you could take care of others a lot longer. You can make more in your career, which could help take care of them a lot longer. You'll have more time. You'll have quality years in your 60s and 70s and 80s versus, hey, I spent all this time with you and now I'm really suffering at age 55 and now you're going to have to take care of me. That's, that's not fair on them. And, you know, I, I think we're getting to a point in culture where it's we understand mental health, emotional health, physical health. This is so that we could be a better human in society. You know, we could, I want to be around healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, physically healthy people. And here in LA, that definitely doesn't feel that way, but you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's doing uh, a service for us, our family and society by prioritizing these things. You know, it's funny that you say that because I created, um, I, I had a Christmas party at my house last year. And I invited a bunch of people and I invited them from the Y. So I just I just joined the YMCA, started working out. And then I invited all the people that show up for the swimming from 5 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. in the morning. I invited that group to my house for Christmas. And I said, why am I inviting you? And I said, it's because at this point of my life, I'm only looking for healthy friends where I can have healthy relationships. And I said, I deemed you as one of those people and I would like to invite you over for Christmas. So what I did was I set a boundary, like I'm looking for healthy friends, healthy relationships. So then these people are like, oh, I'm coming to your party and I'm going to bring the best version of myself. And so not just working out, but now our conversations, if we get together, it's because I have set a parameter that these are my healthy friends and we're having healthy relationships. So when they get together, we don't gossip. We don't talk negative stuff. We don't talk smack about anybody. We're not, oh, woe is me. Life sucks. Life's bad or whatever. It's like everyone is bringing their best self to the conversation. And I'm sure that we all have down days. But one of the things that I found most incredible about that particular group of people is they do show up every day. These are people that are disciplined. These are people that are working out. These are people that value their health. These are people that value self-discipline and all the things. And I started thinking, oh, my goodness, why didn't I do this 25 years ago? Because now I've got this whole group of really passionate, healthy people that are fun to be around. And life is good. Like, why didn't I do this 25 years ago? I have no idea, but it worked really well. <laughs> the biggest hack I've heard <laughs> is going to a, a fitness center or a gym and making that your social circle. And mm -hmm. I, 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 I like wrote an entire article of just finding the right gym. Because for me in LA, there's gyms that cost $20 a month up to $400 a month. And mm -hmm. people go, well, you can get the same workout at the $10 a month gym. And the, the weights may be the same. And that, that's a good gym for, the, for certain people. But for me, I said, when I go in, I want to find friends I can grow with. I want to find friends that are high level, that are pursuing different types of businesses and careers and are driven in other areas. And so I pay more for that gym, but just to find a place where it's less about the workout, more about the environment, because we are the product of the five people we spend the most time around. So if you find a gym or a fitness center, or maybe it's a, a Saturday group, maybe it's parents that also walk their dogs on the beach. I, it could be anything where you say, all right, they're about health, they're about fitness. And th this is the type of people I want to spend more time around because my best self is coming out and it's. And that's the standard, too, in order to be around this group. There isn't gossip. They're not talking about just watching the game and drinking a lot of beer or cheating on their partners. But instead, it's like, hey, this is a healthy group of people. How do I get around them longer? To me, that's a lot more important than the gym equipment, right? That, that That's one element. But to find a place where you can be healthy physically around other people that will hold you accountable, that you could grow with 
in terms of friendships, maybe business with, that's incredibly valuable. And my best friends in the city are all at that Equinox location. And I will gladly pay twice as much as I do right now because of so, of, of so much of the value I'm getting from the other members that are so like-minded that have invited me to their birthday parties, out to dinner, invited me to conferences and certain events where I meet other growth-minded people. So, you know, I, I'm fortunate here in Los Angeles to have options and to be around a lot of communities where that is that is popular, but wherever you are in the country or the world, you got to find that part of town, that part of the city where that is. And I'd, I'd rather drive an hour away and have to listen to podcasts and make calls and do other things to be around those people than to be close by. But it, it's not a place that I'm welcomed or I, I feel very, uh, very good around and a place where I don't want to linger. You know, I, I love having to drag myself out of the gym because I have another conversation. There's another lead. There's another business opportunity or opportunity to go out and hang out with some of these guys that I really like. So I, I just can't stress enough how important that has been to me and to many others. Tell me about the connection of now you are creating a healthy environment in the small window of space that we call the gym. When you go back home, how do we create that same feeling of, yes, this, this is the place I have arrived. When we go back home and we have all of our stuff that is, you know, just left over and it's not put away and it's, it's just kind of a, a mess. How do we, how do we take that, that energetic self-disciplined self back home and reinvent the world that we live in? Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I think it's, you start with zero versus start with everything. I, I, I love, if, I, if you've ever sat in a Tesla, a Tesla is a very minimalistic type of setup. And to me, it's it's very soothing. I'm, I'm, I'm not going crazy trying to interpret everything, all the buttons, all the bells and whistles, any of that. So for me, I go, well, if I want to be as energized at, at home as possible, because I live in the middle of a stressful city, what would that look like? What would it look like to live in a place where the second I walk in, I'm recharged. And sometimes it's, this would be here, this would be here. But a lot of times it's, this wouldn't be here. This wouldn't be here. This wouldn't be here. And so it's really removing things because to me, very little, very clean, very open is what recharges my battery. And if I'm in a place where I'm, my energy is being taken by my environment, where I'm at from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m., 12 hours of the day, and then I'm out in the world, which is taking my energy at all these things, then there's no way I could recharge. And then my path to burnout is a lot quicker. So I would say, yeah, I would say start with what, what, what do I really need to continue the healthy path? I mean, it might just be, I want my blender out. I want the popcorn machine put away. I want my workout clothes to be front and center and some of these things to be out. I want maybe a vision board because instead of having all this stuff, let's see if I could take some of these magazines and put a vision board together and have one clean poster of what where I'm going. So now I come home and say, wow, I put an effort today and this is where I'm headed. That's a, that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, one of the pieces of art that I have in my room is just this Buddha statue that's meditating. And I look at it and it's soothing. It's nothing else but just a bit soothing to me. And it reminds me to be still and mindful. And that's about it. So every every piece of art, everything around me, I don't want it to have to take any mental bandwidth, right? So all the, the clothes, all the papers, all the clutter to me is just trying to um, analyze and understand if I need anything or I don't. And if you can't tell, I'm a Virgo. I'm a textbook Virgo. So every this this is being drained constantly. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this full because, uh, you know, by 6 p.m. every night, I feel like I've taken the SATs. So to walk home and then just have all these things, it, it would be too much. So I get all that stuff out in the world. At home, I want to make sure I'm being recharged. And I guess that looks different for everyone. But, you know, I guess just starting with what would propel me towards a healthier life in terms of clothes, the supplements, the blenders or the appliances. I think that's just a good place to start. Those are great suggestions. 
Um, I know for me, um, I am trying to get my life back in order as well. And one of the things that we did over the last couple of years is we decided to move. We talked about it. And so we started getting rid of if I moved to a smaller place because we would be downsizing, what would we not take with us? And we started getting rid of those items of clutter. And it was with the concept that when I go on vacation, there are all like if you go to any travel agency or you get these magazines in the mail of people that are on vacation or they're on a cruise, what you see are these people having moments together and it's families laughing and talking and it's very minimalistic environments. It's not that there's gobs of stuff around them. It's very minimalistic. It's just the family. It's just them having fun and laughing and there's a ball in their hand or they're playing tag and it's just them and the dog and they're having these moments. And I started thinking, why is it when we go on vacation, we pay a lot of money so we go, can go to a hotel room where there's nothing in there except a bed and a lamp. That's it. And I was like, wait a second, I've got it all backwards. We're paying all this money to bring stuff into our lives so that we can pay more money and then go on vacation and get away from it all. That doesn't make any sense. And I said, what if I just started getting rid of stuff and not reintroducing it into my life? How much will I miss it? And can I recreate that feeling of like, hey, I'm on vacation and I'm recharging, as you say, by getting rid of everything. So we did it in steps. We started getting rid of stuff. We actually did a clutter corner show one day where I pulled out all my kitchen appliances. You talk about the blender. I kept my, my Vitamix, but I let everything else go. <laughs> I got rid of all my other stuff. I'm like, I don't make paninis and I don't make waffles and I don't, you know, let me get rid of all that stuff. When we decided to move, because our, our home is on the market right now, it's under contract. We just sold our home. But what's interesting about it is we put the stuff that we could not let go of, we put it in a storage unit. And I said, okay, if I have to get in my car and I have to drive down the street and I have to go get something out of the storage unit, I probably need it. But anything else I don't have to get in like 30 days, actually, we never needed in the first place. So at the end of the 30 days, I took everything out of the storage unit and I had a yard sale and I sold everything. I said, we haven't used this in 30 days. There were like three things that I went to the storage unit and I got and I brought back. And they were stupid stuff like an over-the-door rack where I hung towels or something. <laughs> but <laughs> everything else we sold and we got rid of. And now, I mean, I, I hate to say it, people came in and they actually bought my life plants. They bought everything, like everything. And I look around, I'm like, man, there is nothing here, nothing left. Do I miss it? And I, the only thing I really missed was I missed my live plants. I had a couple of plants and I replaced mm -hmm. them with fake plants because I'm not around enough to even water them. We talk about being too busy. So I was looking around saying, what did my life miss? And what's really peculiar about what you're saying is I created inadvertently, it was accidental, but I created that, oh my goodness, I'm on vacation kind of a place where I walk in mm -hmm. and everything's spick and span. It's super clean. There's nothing here. And I'm like, yes, wow, amazing. And I just have this feeling of like, look how creative I am. And I get to sit down. There are no distractions. There's nothing to consume my energy. There's nothing to, I have to decide or trip over. Do I have to wash this or da, 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 whatever. It's, whoa, I just get to sit down and it's my time. Yeah, decompress. Think if you ever go and get a massage, you go to a spa. Is a spa loaded with things or is it just gentle music, nice aesthetics and usually very minimal, right? You, you think, wow, that, why? Because they want you to unwind. They don't want to bombard you with all of these things that take your energy because we're always, we're wired to interpret things, right? Is that dangerous? Is that scary? Do I need to look out for that? You go to Times Square, like people's homes, some people's homes are like Times Square. That's very stressful. <laughs> well, you don't want Times Square as your home. You'll never be able to recharge. But when you have that spa-like environment, or you think of the inside of a Tesla, for me, is that everything's clean and clear, and now I could be present and put my mind to what I want to versus trying to figure things out. So, uh, I, I, I love that example for you because you also experimented with what do I really need over that 30 days? If you have to drive there, you realize, ah, okay, I actually do use this more. And it's not one of these, well, maybe I need this in three months. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll use this a couple times. You actually went through the experiment and because it was only 30 days, you didn't have to hold on to the storage unit for six months or a year while you're paying 400 bucks a month or more just to hold stuff you don't even need. So that, that's what's kind of funny. It's like 
you're paying all this money to store things that you might need in the future. And you just went with that experiment of, I don't think I need anything here. And it turned out you needed one little thing or you, you'd like one little thing. And then at the end of the 30 days, you liquidate it. And guess what? Uh, unless it's photo albums and very personal things, you could buy it again. It's mm -hmm. very it's very easy to go on Amazon and buy a lot of this stuff. Go to to Goodwill. Go. I mean, the Goodwill here in LA is great. There's a lot of really good stuff you could find. And I, I think you just realize how how easy it actually is to to do this and how you could always get it back unless it's something very sentimental which i do understand that's that's a bit different but yeah you, you went through that experiment and then you know it's the same thing as we tell our guys with when they're cleaning up their finances i might use this app i, I you know I, i'm going to use this membership whatever okay just get rid of it if these businesses will want your money back so there's a good chance that if you cancel that $30 a month app you'll get an email the next day saying why did you cancel? And then if you put in, uh, it's too expensive, they'll say magically, hey, join back for 50% uh, off for your next three months. <laughs> we'll always welcome your money back. So whatever membership it is, you know, just cancel it. And then usually they'll, you know, you, you can get it back after a week, a couple of weeks, a month. And usually they'll offer you something special to regain your business. So I love the idea of experimenting. It's It's not like, this has to work. This has to be the end all be all. It's let's try something out. Let's get feedback as to what works, what doesn't work, what needs to be tweaked or, or whatever. And then we'll go from there because no matter what, we're going to learn something. Tell me about the finance part of it. How does clutter connect with finances? Well, I, I feel like it's it just not being organized with your stuff, not being organized with your money. And I think when you look at how the system is, overall, no one wants you to be fully aware, right? I mean, the companies don't want you to be aware because just make it easy to buy. You know, you can go on Amazon now and buy a $4 box of chamomile tea. And then it'll say, do you want to pay it all in full? Or do you want to get a credit card and get $50 bonus? This, this could be 45 bucks in your pocket with this Amazon card. You could do two payments of $2 each, all these things just to make <laughs> it so seamless. And so any businesses uh, goal is for to remove all friction from purchasing, right? Let's remove all friction. We'll take Apple Pay. We'll take credit cards. We'll do all this. And because now it's so hard to be clear with the finances because there's all these micro subscriptions, there's money coming in, but there's money leaving in so many ways. And then it, it's not really pushed to learn financial literacy because very few businesses are out there making money teaching financial literacy. Most businesses are saying, hey, we cannot have you uh, be logical about this. We've got to push your emotional buttons and say, YOLO, uh, FOMO, uh, retail therapy, w whatever else, just to get you to buy their product so they can keep the, the ball rolling. And so, uh, I mean, I think it just comes down to physical health, financial health, clutter, whatever it is, it's you have your starting point, right? This didn't happen overnight. You have your starting point. You got to get very clear on this is the money coming in. These are my assets. This is the money that's leaving. This is These are my liabilities. And this is a snapshot of where I am today. And then really saying, okay, now that I see the picture, clearly this is a huge issue. This I could start tackling. But a lot of times people don't even realize what's going on. They don't realize where they're spending a lot of money or where they could be saving a lot of money, or maybe they're just overpaying on taxes and just a, a good CPA could add a couple thousand dollars to the bottom line every single year. Or maybe it's, you know what, I, I thought I only had three of these subscriptions, but I have 16 of these little things that are taking $270 a month from me. And that amount applied to paying off your car could really do wonders two years, three years, four years down the road. But yeah, it really comes down to being honest with yourself where you're starting, seeing where you should tackle first based on what's there, and then just working at it every single day. Well, I'm so glad that you brought that up. We've got lots of people that are agreeing with you here. Firehorse says, I did that with my internet service provider when they raised the price, and then said, uh, send a letter to quit, and they got me back 50% off. So way to go, Firehorse, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Sugar Honey says, I clean out my freezer. So many frozen fruits I never ate and I kept buying more. 
And I think what I'm hearing today is a constant thread of being aware, because when you're aware, you have choices. Also, when you are aware and you have self-discipline, you can make small tweaks, whether it's with your finances. And I love that Brad is willing to address this issue because I know many of us, again, are drifting when it comes to our finances. And if we were to sit down every single Sunday, small tweak, and we were to look at just the rundown of where we spent our money this week, there are probably one or two of those things we could say, wait a second, that's a subscription I don't need. Or those are frozen food, fruits that I'm not eating and I just keep stocking my freezer with more and more and more of them. Uh, that's an internet service that we don't use very much. And I'm, I don't mean internet service because we all use the internet, but I'm thinking of like a cable TV where right. there might be channels that you subscribe for because there was a, a cool show that was on and you wanted to watch it. But now that you've seen that cool show because you binged watched it, now you're still subscribed to that channel and you don't really watch it anymore. There's probably a lot of those that we could scale back on, just like scaling back on our stuff. And if we were able to figure out a way to create that discipline where we are making wiser choices because we can and because we're super smart, that I think that that creates the new normal that we're looking for, where we are in control of our own lives. Yeah. And one, one thing in terms of how do you actually get started? How do you actually do this? Right. Because it's like, all right, I got to do the work. No one's going to work out for you. No one's going to eat healthy for you. No one's going to go over the finances for you. If you're married, if you have a, a serious partner, one of the best things that I heard that I've, I've done myself in the past when I was with a partner and a lot of these guys do that would tell them, hey, this is how you're going to tackle it is to have a money date, right? You could just have a money date with your wife, with your husband and say, look, Sunday evening from seven to 9 PM, we're going to put on some nice jazz music in the background. We're going to uh, right after dinner, have like a nice little dessert. And we're just going to open up the computer. We're going to go through things. We're going to make this an enjoyable experience, maybe a glass of wine if, if that's your thing, but make this a really nice experience where you associate breaking down your finances, looking for opportunities to get better. Because at the end of the day, you're just working with one another to go towards a goal that both of you agree is important, which is just financial literacy, financial freedom, maybe saving more for your kid's college fund, something like that. And then you make it enjoyable, say, oh, let's see what we could find in our budget. Let's see what we could, uh, where we're spending money that we might be able to experiment with getting rid of. Or let's see if there's a way to increase our income based on our extra time or our extra bedroom or our second car that we don't really utilize very often. But if you get in that habit of, you know, I'd say first it'd be once a week when you're really trying to achieve something, but it could be as little as once a month when things are really dialed in and you you're on a really great pace and you're very clear of where you're going and you have a monthly money date with your partner and all of a sudden it's like, okay we made x amount this month we uh you know spent this amount this month we have christmas coming up are we ahead of schedule in terms of saving for presents and travel all that kind of stuff and it becomes so much easier because now you're looking forward to it because it's a, a time with your partner to go towards a, a mutual goal in an enjoyable setting. This is not going to be like an interrogation room. It's not supposed to be like sitting at the DMV waiting for your license and it be <laughs> miserable. You want this to be as enjoyable as possible, right? This is, you should be excited about where you're going with your finances. And you could do the same thing with your health. It could be if you and your partner want to start this health journey, this fitness journey, okay, let's do a, a weekly date where we talk about how often we exercised, when we slipped up, what we could do to hold each other accountable in terms of, hey, if I'm if I'm sleeping in a bit late or that alarm clock goes off, I, please wake me up. Please do that this upcoming week. Wake me up when I, I go uh, smash the snooze button. So you could do this with everything, but you, if you have a partner, you have built-in accountability that single people have to search for. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because it's a uh, it's something that many of us don't do. I know that when I got married, one of the things that my parents encouraged me to do, and I I will forever be grateful to them, is to create a family meeting once a week, and it was an alignment meeting with my spouse, so that every single week, and for us, it was on Tuesday afternoon because my husband had Tuesday day off, and so Tuesday afternoon worked for us. 
but we had a, an agenda and we would sit down and we would have a family meeting where we would go over the finances and we would talk about things that, like you mentioned, bills that we have upcoming, money that's coming in, money that's going out. Are there any family members that need an extra hand? Maybe we could lend them some money or, or what have you. We also had on our uh, alignment session, a prayer list. So I don't know what people's religious upbringings are or beliefs, but I don't need to know what the people are going through, but we may want to add someone to our prayer list where we send them positive vibes this week or say a prayer on their behalf or what have you. And then also there are some accountability things. And one of them was, and this is, this goes back to the clutter and things like that. I only get to come up with one, one thing this week that I get to recommend my husband do differently. And he only gets to come up with one thing that I do differently. So instead of nagging all week, I'm thinking all week, man, this, this is the thing. I'm going to be talking about this on Tuesday. <laughs> and if you have three things that you're going to bring up, you got to pick the most important one. And if you're really in love, you'll say, hey, that bothered my spouse last week. Maybe I can work on that also again this week. And you start to whittle away at those little things that cause angst with the other person. But we just celebrated our 22nd wedding anniversary. And I want to say that my husband is the best decision that I've ever made. But I think what keeps me in alignment with that feeling is that instead of just saying till death do us part, literally every single day I wake up and I'm fighting for that relationship. Every single day I'm like, I got to do better. I want this to I want this to last. And so if something goes awry, I've got all the way from now until Tuesday to figure it out. And if I can't figure it out and I need to ask for help, Tuesday is going to be the day when we sit down and we we power through it. And it's been, like you said, grab grab a, a, a drink or something. We don't, neither of us drink. So it's not, you know, a fun drink. It's just, you know, like water or, you know, maybe a smoothie or something. <laughs> but we sit there and we we work through some of those issues. And it has been a real accountability session for us that's kept us both on the same page. Where as we've grown together and as we've matured together, we've worked through some really tough stuff. It's us pulling together saying, hey, you know, at least we've got Tuesday. On Tuesday, all thing disappears for a few minutes while we sit down and we we get to spend time together and we get to figure out, you know, how we're doing as a couple. And it's made a huge difference just in my personal life, but also in my accountability personally and professionally. Well, that, that's amazing. And in terms of fighting for the relationship, when your husband shows up every Tuesday for years and years wanting that as well, it's a lot more uh, you know, you're a lot more convicted about fighting for a relationship when you see your partner is equally convicted in fighting for the, the relationship as well. And so if it were just you fighting every Tuesday and then he's late or he's he's indifferent or he's not really caring, didn't put much thought into it, that'd be a, a different story. So it's kind of cool that you both hold each other accountable to it. And the one thing, I mean, there could be a list of 20 things like, well, the, you know, doesn't really uh, put the dishes in the dishwasher the, the right way. <laughs> and, you know, there could be a bunch of things because we're all different. However, to address 15 different things, that's overwhelming. And then it's mm. it's almost hard to not be offended by it if you're the other person. But if it's like, hey, just this one thing, don't don't worry about all this stuff. There's one little thing that, man, if you just did this slightly differently, I, I would appreciate it so much. And then you could build on that. That's the atomic habit. That's that one thing. That's 52 things a year, right? And then times 22. Time, times 22 years. Yeah, I probably covered all the things. <laughs> <laughs> You're both completely different people at this point. Very different people. But you know, it's interesting. I woke up one day midway through my marriage and I came back and I said, I no longer believe till death do us part. I don't. And when mm. I made that vow, I did. And I said, but I don't want to stay in a relationship just because I said I would stay. I want to stay in the relationship because I want to be here. And I want you to stay because you want to be here. And the minute you stop wanting to be here, I want you to leave. I want you to go find happiness somewhere else because that's really all I wish for you is happiness. And so when we both said, wait a second, I want to be here. I'm still here because I want to be here. Okay, good. Then you can stay, right? But I find myself, there are days that I'm coming up short. I wake up and I'm like, have I done anything today to contribute to my relationship? And I'm like, I have not. So wait a second, where's a post-it note? Let me write a post-it note and I'll put it inside my husband's lunch and I'll say, this lunch was prepared with love or something. Like, I got to I gotta do something. Let me put a post-it note on the, on the dashboard of the car. This is, I'm thinking of you. Something. I got to do something, right? I got to carry my weight. But it's that accountability that you're talking about. 
well, it's funny is that some people out there would say, oh, I don't even know what I could do. And now, you know, we're big advocates of the environment, the accountability, the connection, because the information is the easiest thing. You mm -hmm. tell me you didn't go on chat GPT and put create a list of 50 ways I could surprise my wife, surprise my husband. If you have not done that yet, that's the answer. There you go. 50 ways. So the information is the easiest thing to come by now. It's just the implementation, the execution, and then getting the, the support, the environment, the accountability so that you take actions on these things. But I mean, that, just the fact that that's your thought process of what could I do today to surprise my husband or show him I care. If you run out of ideas, I'm sure the internet will back you up. I'm sure there'll be a lot of ideas that you have. Ooh, I never thought of that. Yeah, when I go to the grocery store, I'm going to see if they have that one chocolate that he really likes or that one type of, I don't know, mixed nuts or whatever it is. And there might be new ways that, hey, uh, every single week, I want a new way to surprise my husband and chat GPT hopefully can keep that going for the next 22 years if it had to. What an amazing way to end this show. You guys, we've been here with Brad Jerry today, and I have learned so much, and I've been empowered myself. I know his specialty is empowering men, but hey, if he empowered all of us women as well, I want to give him a high five and say thank you so much. Brad, tell our listeners where they can go to find you. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, Angela. Uh, you can check out empowermen.co. There is a free guide there that will help you get in great shape physically, but also save you money. And that combination of combining health and financial wellness is our passion. That is our niche. And, and that's what we love to empower people with. So there's some free guides there. And if there are any men in your life that need more support, more coaching, more accountability, then we're happy to work with them. Thanks again so much, you guys. I appreciate all of you that jumped in and added your comments and your, your two cents and for your participation. Thank you, Brad, for joining us. And we will see you guys again, same time, same place next week. In the meantime, go to ChatGPT, ask for accountability, and ask for the tips that Brad encouraged us. Thanks, guys.